Hey, I'm Paige Feldman, the writer, director, and producer of Interrobang, the short-form comedy anthology series about moments after sex when being emotionally naked is way more terrifying than being physically naked. And today, I'm going to do a lightning round Q&A about the show. An interrobang is a punctuation mark that combines a question mark with an exclamation point. It is the punctuational equivalent of saying WTF, and it is my absolute favorite punctuation mark. So the punctuation mark is actually where I got the inspiration. I was in my kitchen chopping some garlic, making dinner, when I started picking apart the word interrobang. Intero for questions, like the question mark, and bang, well, that's what some people call an exclamation point, but bang also means sex. And thinking about the word as questions after sex, I thought, not only is that a great title, Intero Bang, it's also a great concept for a show. And considering I had just started writing romantic comedies for the first time, despite loving them all my life, I mean, it was a natural fit, so I immediately started writing the first episode, The Motion in the Ocean. My writing process for Interrobang was very personal. Even though the stories were funny and silly and heightened in some ways, I wanted them to be grounded in real, relatable fears and anxieties. So when I started off writing, my first step was to brainstorm or just write a list of all of the things that made me anxious and made me afraid about relationships. And from that list, I chose the ideas for the themes behind each episode of Interrobang. And things on that list were questions like, does he like me? <laughs> and uh, what if I fart in front of this person I'm seeing? Or what if they hate my writing and my art and my filmmaking? What then? And those ideas and others were the basis for all six episodes of season one of Interrobang. Well, in the strictest sense, no, because I've never been a man and had a threesome with another man. I've uh, never been a painter and showed a partner, my art that I made. I've never had a who's grosser competition with someone I was seeing either. But like I just said, they're all based on fears and anxieties that I hold. And also that my friends hold. Like uh, in the episode Forever, it's based on a woman who is deeply wanting to get married and she is afraid to talk to her partner about it. Her partner doesn't want to talk to her about it and there's a disconnect. And that is something that I've heard about a lot from a lot of my female friends. So I had the idea, my aha moment in my kitchen in November of 2017. I wrote the script for The Motion in the Ocean, which was the pilot episode and also the proof of concept shortly thereafter. I also started outlining ideas for other episodes in the show and created a whole show Bible. When we got around to making the motion in the ocean, it was December of 2018. I wrapped the shoot and edited it really quickly and then launched a crowdfunding campaign in February of 2019. I raised a little over $7,000 on Seed and Spark, which is our budget to make the other five episodes of the show. I wrote those, polished them, and then we shot them in August of 2019. Post-production started immediately thereafter, editing, sound design, color correction, and music by the amazing Jonah Matranga of One Line Drawing. We finished post-production in July of 2020 and then premiered in April of 2021 at the Seattle International Film Festival, 
So All In from Idea to Premiere, which is something I know you're used to hearing me say if you're watching my uh, Making Kaleidoscope series. It was three years and five months to make Interabang happen. The thread that connects every episode of Interabang is the idea that yes, you are lovable even if. No matter what the even if is, you are lovable. And how could I make a show that espouses that everyone is lovable regardless of their anxieties if the cast, if the characters were completely homogenous, were all white? That just wouldn't be right. It would be completely antithetical to the message of the show. So because diversity and inclusion is extremely important to me, but also because of what Interabang stands for, I knew that when I was making this show, I needed to go in and cast as diversely as possible. So I opened up all roles to all ethnicities and to overcome some internal biases I'm sure I have as a white woman, I made sure that I invited 75% of each audition were people of color. And I know a lot of people when they're talking about diversity and inclusion talk about this as if it's a hardship. And oh my God, it's not. There are so many wicked talented people in Los Angeles, wicked talented actors of all races and ethnicities. But there's so many fewer roles for people of color that I was getting people, I mean, the talent I'm getting, I'm mad. They shouldn't have, had, they shouldn't have been auditioning for a web series. They should be on TV. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful to have the cast I have. 10 of the 13 actors are people of color and that was my intention. But in the end of the day, I cast the absolute best people for each episode. They were all just joys to work with. And as a bonus, this show looks like the world that we live in. Faking it, we had this whole, beautiful attic space we were using, but we somehow mismeasured during the walkthrough, uh, me, Wyatt, the DP, and Sydney, sound mixer, and we weren't able to actually make any of the shots on our shot list work once the actors were in the space on the day. So during that fiasco where we were just trying anything and everything and breaking so many continuity rules, trying to get shots that looked good and sounded good because somehow we missed the fact that there was half of the room that sounded completely different than the other half of the room. I got a call from one of the actors in Forever that she suddenly has to shift her schedule up 12 hours so that she can make a flight to Chicago where she booked a commercial. So in the middle of a shoot where I don't have the right shot, I don't have a shot list anymore, I have to reschedule the next day. Luckily, everything got worked out. Faking it was saved by Leah, the editor, who was able to create so much interest and tension out of this wacky amalgamation of shots we gave her and made the climactic ar argument so much better. And then forever, luckily, the crew and the rest of the cast we were able to switch their schedules at a moment's notice, and we finished that episode with minutes to spare before the actress had to go catch her flight. And that was well in part to Wyatt's ability to get this amazing last super long fluid shot of a cell phone going dark. And I mean, you gotta, you gotta watch forever to see it, but it's a fantastic shot and makes the entire show. And like all of these problems, they were solved by teamwork and skill of everyone on the crew. And I'm so thankful for everyone I got to work with because without them, two episodes might be a complete mess. <laughs> Number one, yes, I'm actually a director. So I went to USC undergrad, have a film degree, and while I was there, I was told by some classmates that I shouldn't be a director because I care too much about story and not enough about lenses. And because they were seemingly really good 
at the directing thing and I was great at writing, I figured I could stay and write and, you know, maybe those dreams of directing were just dreams. And, but when I wrote in Terabang and realized how easy it would be to produce on my own, I started wanting to direct again, getting that itch. So I decided to try because small, small risk, potential big reward. And I'm so glad I did because I love working with actors. I love being able to watch a story that I've written come to life. And I absolutely love working with a director of photography who knows so much about lenses, enough where I can trust them to give me the exact look I want to so I can go and talk about story and care way too much about it with the actors. Number two, ask for help. I was afraid to ask for help at first. I wanted to make Interabang, but didn't quite know how. And I brought it up in one of my writing groups thinking that, well, they weren't going to judge me because, well, they were already judging my writing, so it couldn't be that much worse. And from saying that I wanted to make it, it turns out that Raul, one of the members of the writing group, has a boom mic and sound recording equipment. And Aaron, he was free. Uh, um, one night to PA and then I got bolder and at a party I mentioned to my friend David who's a director of photography that I had a script that I wanted to make and he asked to read it he read the motion in the ocean he loved it and said I'm in tell me when tell me where and just like that I had a crew and I was gonna make a movie number three Hire an on-set producer. <laughs> I'm yelling at past page because I know <laughs> right now that that whole situation where I had to reschedule forever while also trying to figure out how to shoot faking it in the middle of that cramped attic. If I had had a producer, they would have been the one dealing with the rescheduling and I could have spent my entire brain on the prospect of figuring out how to make faking it look as best as we can, could. I mean, we got there eventually either way, but life would have been so much simpler if I had just hired an onset producer to do that work for me. I got three different projects. First, How to Fall in Love the Hard Way. It's my audio romantic comedy series about three women figuring out life, love, and friendships in their 30s. The pilot I recorded and released last October, November, and it is out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you can get podcasts right now. There are 10 total episodes in season one, and we just wrapped episode eight yesterday. Because I'm a one woman band behind the scenes in this production, editing's taking some time. So I'm hoping to have episode two released in December and then subsequent episodes following pretty regularly after that. If you want more information about it, um, you can search How to Fall in Love the Hard Way on any podcast platform. Go to listen.howtofallinlovethehardway.com to be directed directly to the RSS feed or howtofallinlovethehardway.com for more information about the show. And fun fact, Jennifer Chung from More Than Words, one of the episodes of Interabang, actually plays um, one of the leads in How to Fall in Love the Hard Way, Harper. And Jennifer is such a fantastic actress and collaborator. She asks such smart questions, and a lot of the questions she asks and things she wanted to try while we were recording the pilot has helped shape Harper as a character and I mean, it's, it's a really great collaboration. I'm so lucky to have worked with her on a Terabang and now again on How to Fall in Love the Hard Way. Next is also Wing Dad. This is a film that I co-wrote, a feature I co-wrote with uh, director Lucas Astrom. It shot in December of 2020 and is a coming of age in your 30s comedy about a man's strained relationship with his father, um, sort of a, an odd couple, type dynamic. It is hilarious, if I do say so myself, and we are, they're just finishing up post on it, so hopefully I'll have release details soon. And then I'm also looking to make my feature directorial debut pretty soon, and I'm documenting the whole process, um, the making of Kaleidoscope, which is the title of the film that I'm going to be making, from idea to premiere in real time. I'm documenting it all on this YouTube channel. I have a new episode up every Wednesday, 
detailing my process. Right now I'm in the pre-writing phase and talking a lot about just my, my writing process and trying to figure out the characters who I'm writing. Thanks so much for watching this Q&A about Interabang. I'm Paige Feldman, again, the writer, director, and producer of the series. Interabang is finishing up its festival run currently, and I don't know what the release plans are going to be, but if you'd like to know more, please go to www.cakefightfilms.com and scroll all the way to the bottom. There will be a place for you to sign up, put your email address in, and as soon as I know when Interabang is gonna be viewable everywhere, or anywhere, I will make sure to email you so you too can be the first to know. Thank you again so much for watching, and remember, you are lovable even if whatever that weird thing is that you do.